Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the second episode of this meta ass audio tutorials on how to do audio tutorials. In the last episode, I showed you how to set up and record your audio from your DAW and your voiceover through OBS. And today we're going to import that into my tutorial editing template and I'll show you what my template looks like. So let's just jump right in. All right, so here we are in my tutorial editing template. If you're a Reaper user, I will also have this template available to download on my blog. So whenever I record a tutorial, I open one of these and I drag my multi-channel 2.1 audio and video into this template. And this template is basically set up to automate a huge chunk of my audio mixing tasks. And if you use other DAWs, you can recreate this pretty easily in your own DAW. But let's go through this track by track. This EP master track is my mix bus. So all the tracks you see below that are indented get fed into this track before going to my master output. So we'll get to what's on this track in the end first let's look at all its children the first track is my b-roll where i put any kind of additional footage on and it goes on top because that's how reaper works whatever video is on top that plays over the top of whatever's below it so b-roll goes on top of the a roll now we'll get to video in detail in the next episode so for now let's just move on to audio the next track is my footage track and on this track is where i import my mkv video out of obs so it has the video and three channels of audio and i have all of them together and this allows me to edit all these elements together Together. So if I cut or trim or move or stretch the clips on here, it applies to everything that I recorded basically. Easy peasy. In other DAWs, I'd have to group these elements, but that's extra work and I hate extra work. This track houses my audio, but doesn't actually play any of it. As you can see, it's master send is disabled. So the audio from this is not going anywhere. Instead, all three channels of audio are bussed out of this track to two additional tracks. So channels one and two contain my DAW output and they get sent to channels one and two of my black hole track. And then channel three gets sent to my VO or voice voiceover track. In other DAWs, again, you can create sends, open an LCR track or something like that, where you put the audio and then send channel three to a mono track and then one and two to a stereo track. So directly below this is my VO track. So my audio from channel three is bust into this track and here we process it. The first plugin is a denoiser and I have this cut seven inch DB off the noise of my audio. I use the Z noise plugin from Waves, but any denoise plugin works, including Reaper's free refer, reaffer, however you pronounce it. Now, how much I take off the noise I adjust on a per video basis and that's based on how noisy my voiceover recording was and that depends on what level I record at and also what was going on in the house when I was shooting so if there are fans going or someone is cooking I'll have to take more noise out and sometimes I can just turn it off if I don't need it and if it's not bothering anybody next up is my vocal rider set to a target of 15 dB and a lot of people especially when mixing vocals would have this at the end of the chain but here I have this on the top of my chain and it's there to even out my voice because as you can see for example in the beginning here I was a bit quiet and then as my voice warms up I get louder and when audio is going I yell over it and sometimes I, I tend to mumble like this maybe a little bit so this just evens all of that stuff out and down the chain I have more plugins evening out the audio post processing next is a de and that just curbs my SE bits of my audio to be less sharp pretty standard for any voiceover chain again I use sibilance by waves which I like a lot but any de works here so I have gap teeth so my s's are pretty obnoxious so i reduce this by a lot let's a b our voice here with and without it's only usable with midi cc or mouse wheel it's only usable with midi cc or mouse wheel next up is an eq and this eq curve again is something that works for my voice you should figure out your own eq curve for your voice so let's again a b my voice with and without this basically allows me to have this option turned on all the time and i have this basically allows me to have this option turned on all the time and I have it again this is something where you dial in once and you can pretty much forget about it for the rest of your tutorial making career next up is a compressor and this evens out the loudness of my audio obviously so I have set the threshold pretty low and the ratio is 5 to 1 with a fast attack and pretty medium ish release and a lot of makeup gain so this can be dialed in more carefully if, you know I would never use these settings if I'm mixing music but it's a pretty good way of kind of setting it and forgetting it and it really evens out the loudness of my voice a lot and then finally there's a limiter and that takes any bit of potential clipping that got away from my compressor and also boosts the overall loudness of my audio one last time so i like to boost my audio in stages so my chain is pretty dialed in and really i have very little to do here for new tutorials i do adjust some of the settings from time to time like the denoising amount the threshold and makeup gain of my compressor all of which i have on my track controls as well so i don't even need to open this additional window but for the most part this really automatically 
automatically mixes and gain stages my voiceover. There's definitely ways of optimizing this, but for my purpose of just having my viewers understand me, this is more than fine to me. Good enough for government work as they say. So next track down is my black hole which takes in audio from my DAW output and that's channels 1 and 2 of our video recording. It has an EQ on it which is turned off but I may use it here and there if needed and then it has this compressor on it which is side chain to my vocals. So I am sending my VO track to this track as the side chain key and that ducks the audio from my DAW output when I speak over it as you can see for example here. Let's check it out. This is what happens when I solo a track. So as you can see, it's not fully soloing my bass. Everything else is still playing, but it's playing a lot quieter. So let's listen to the difference there. So as you can see, if I start talking over my DAW output, it just turns it down a little bit so I am more intelligible. Below that is my ADR track. And again, this sends all audio back to my voiceover chain. So basically whatever ADR I do is processed the same way as my voiceover. And it has a recording track below it with meters so I can sound check. And this is in case I misspoke during the shooting or if I want to add additional info that I glazed over in the tutorial, then I can hear my voiceover and then record additional lines or lines to replace from here. Um, there's again one EQ here in case I need to match the EQ of my ADR to my voiceover. But most of the times I don't even really bother because like whatever, we're not making a film here. Finally, I have an audio B-roll and that's where I would put any additional sound effects or even background music if it's needed for my tutorial. So this is clearly optional. All of these are feeding to the EP master track, which just has a limiter on it. And as you can see, both the ceiling and threshold are set to the same level of minus 1.1. So it's not really boosting or cutting anything. It's not really coloring the track by limiting. And this is good to have because sometimes in your tutorials, you may want to actually show something that clips or crazy feedback or whatever. So this just acts as a last line of defense against outputting something that may hurt the ears or speakers of your audience. So this takes care of that, but most of the time, nothing really really gets to that level on my audio anyway. Now outside this entire structure is a track called Unaltered Audio and this is for audio that I want my viewers to hear as is. So if I'm showing reference tracks or showing mixing, this is where I would put the audio so that my audience hears the audio as is. This track is also taking a pre-fader sent from my black hole channel, which is muted. So sometimes I can also choose to output my black hole that way. And the send is muted, but if I'm teaching mixing, I unmute the send and instead disable the master parent of my black hole track. Finally, these are for muted strip tracks and they just act as storage for raw footage and b-roll footage and audio and whatever else I want to keep stored, but don't want to end up in my final product. And there you have it. So that's it for today. Hopefully you've seen that setting up a template is really valuable and spending a little bit of time to dial in all the right settings for your voiceover and getting the EQ curves for your voiceover right and all that stuff really saves time in the long run when you're doing a lot of tutorials because a lot of these you can set and forget. Now from the next episode, I want to get into some Reaper specific features. So this may be your stop to get off if you are adamant about not using Reaper. However, do stay tuned because I will show you a lot of things that Reaper does that makes video editing really easy, even compared to dedicated video editing software. And you know, Reaper allows you to import images, put videos on top of each other, and a whole bunch of other things that other DAWs don't do. Other video editing software may do it, but then you lose a lot of audio functionality. So Reaper is really the best case scenario if you ask me. So in the next episode, we'll get into a little bit of that. And also I will show you some really cool editing tricks. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to everybody who donated. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye.